years ago there was a uh, winter hardening and training in dormancy were the same. Today we have varieties like I mentioned, like a six dormancy that actually has a two winter hardening and training that could be planted in this area. So there are differences. You can't just look at dormancy. You have to also look at winter hardening and ratings. Here, for instance, here's a uh, fall dormancy four. Both of these are four varieties, or uh, four dormancies. One of them has come through the winter a whole lot better than the other. So with your all's altitude and things out here, you need to have something with really good winter hardiness rating because it can get really cold really fast in the spring, or it can also uh, uh, warm up and then get cold again. So you need something with that good winter hardiness rating. Coated seed versus raw seed. Um, on the left, you've got coated alfalfa seed, and on the right, you've got raw. The coating, uh, there's different mat, different things you can get in the coatings. Uh, you've got raw, you, these are the different terms. You've got raw seed versus pre inoculated seed. That would be just, just the inoculant that would carry the rhizobia to get it to nodulate and produce its own nitrogen. Then you've got uh, pre-inoculated with apron, and apron is a fungicide that helps with some of the seedling diseases that you can get uh, in the uh, phantomyces, phytophthora, all those kind of things that can attack those young seedlings. And then you have coated seed, and coated seed is a clay-based coating or a polymer-based coating that has the, uh, uh, the apron, the pre-inoculation, as well as the coating all in it. And uh, I kind of like the coated seed better because it's a little bit more forgiving. It's a little bit easier to plant. And uh, it, you don't see as many stand emergence problems with the coating. See over here to the left, this is a, one of our varieties versus a public variety of vernal and then versus a WL. And you can see these photos were taken. This is back in 2011 and how those yield. So, you know, you need to be looking at yield results, finding out how they've been doing, see if they've been tested in your area. You've got a new variety versus vernal, so half a ton a year. If you look at a half a ton a year over the life of the stand, there's a, it can, ends up being quite a little bit of, of, of income if you're looking over the stand, life of the stand, what seed's going to cost you. Dig up a plant, you cut that plant open. If it's all white, in the uh, half root, that's good, healthy tissue. If you start seeing stuff like this, you've got root disease and probably the stand's not gonna last very long. That root disease can be from the, from the soil, it can be damage to the crown, traffic, you know, running tractors over it, grazing pressure, all those kinds of things can, can uh, cause that to get started. There's a picture of the white healthy root. And then this is uh, moderate to severe root disease. You, you take a plant like this one over here, it's not gonna last very much longer. It's not gonna make it through the winter, probably very good. It's definitely not gonna produce uh, very good. So, you know, you need to be rotating that out if you start seeing stuff like that. This is just an example of what a variety would look like if you looked it up in the seed catalog. You've got you know, your bacterial will, Versilium will, Versarium, Anthracnose, and Phytophthora, and all the different ones. Anything that is graded, when you look at these ratings, if you see a high resistance, 50% or greater amount of the seed in that bag is resistant to that particular disease. So if you get down here to, like on this particular variety, you got a Phantomyces, it's only resistant. Only 31 to 50% of those seeds in that bag are resistant to that disease. Down here you have a disease index for rating. This one is a 28 out of 30, or you can have that that's the old ratings that used to go to 30 now to 35, 30 to 35. You can see the overall rating of a particular variety based on that disease index rate. You need to use a probe similar to what we've got up here or shown that shown up here because if you go out with a regular shovel if you just think about the way the shovel is shaped it's wider at the top and pointed at the bottom so when you take that sample you're getting a lot less soil from you know 10 inches below and than what you are at the soil surface and there's a lot of nutrients 
that will hang out right at the top of the soil surface. And they're not very prevalent down lower. But you need to make sure when they run that sample, if you tell them that you pulled it like with these different probes, there's some of them that pull from 0 to 10 inches, some of them 0 to 8 inches. But whoever's running the lab needs to know, too, how deep you pull that sample. You need to write that down. This is a 0 to 10 inch sample. But these probes like this, they make sure that you're pulling a uniform core out of that soil profile. And that's really critical when they run that sample, being able to get you the accurate information that you, you need. seeds drop on the ground, a lot of times there won't be any seedlings come up right next to that tree. And that's, its, that's nature's way of protecting itself against too much competition and all of them, all of them dying. Alfalfa is very good at that. It doesn't, it doesn't allow that. So if you've got an old stand out there, you need to rotate it to another crop before you come back to alfalfa. So you give that soil time to let all of those old dead leaves and plants and roots and everything decay, and then you can go back in and plant. If you, if, say for instance, if you plant in the spring and then you need to replant or to, for, to go back in and thicken that stand up, maybe you didn't get a good enough stand, you can do that for up to 12 months. You can come back in and plant into that. But after that 12 month period, the autotoxicity is going to get too, too thick and, and you're, when those, those seedlings germinate, they're going to die. So you don't want to do that. If you want footage, you better see the vacancy. There's a thing called sorghum. It's another footage. Hey, you want to set the conditions of soil too. Oh. You already have the equipment. So what I'm going to plant the spring is going to be sorghum in that area for two years. Sorghum is a hundred snares in there. But a hundred sorghum is shit. I don't have time. I will yell, I don't see what I don't just get. I don't know, I think it's not in the same. It's heavy. Yeah, I tell you, it conditions the soil to it at the same time. So so that's that's a, that's an alternative that we use on it. The, uh, uh, weed control, there's different weeds that you got to do, perennial weeds versus annual weeds that can cause problems. Uh, but just, you know, anytime you're trying to treat a weed, it's always easier to treat it when it's small than when it's big. So always keep that in mind. So get it done early, get it done fast. Um, there are dormant uh, 
uh, dormant herbicides, I mentioned Belpar. You can go over uh, uh, in the winter time, have those spread on. Uh, and then, but you want to make sure that there's no green out there because they can, it can actually kill the alfalfa that there is. Make sure you kill as many of those weeds before your seed, before you plant the alfalfa as you can. And then, once you get that stand established, get a good, thick, solid stand, and that'll help you a lot. And if, but because you, you're you're right, you're always going to be adding new new problems in there all the time. You guys do have some salt issues out here. There's a there's a whole brochure on salt up here that Dr. Don Miller wrote. You guys can all take one. Uh, but the thing about the, the thing that are some of our varieties that are salt tolerant, we're doing a lot of work with the University of New Mexico, and uh, they're they're doing doing a lot of different testing on on our varieties work work with salt resistance and. Uh, if you have a variety, what, what salt does to a plant is it actually keeps that plant from being able to absorb moisture, okay? So when there's too much salt in the ground, it can't draw moisture into the plant. So if you have, if you have a salt tolerant variety, those varieties are actually a little more drought tolerant than varieties that aren't salt tolerant. And that's what we're coming, we're doing some work down there now where we went in and taken all of our salt varieties and now we're testing them all for, for drought tolerance. So that's something to be thinking about, I mean, as far as drought tolerance. But sometimes that can be, you know, all varieties are a little bit more or less drought tolerant than others, but for the most part, salt will give you a better indication of drought tolerance than, than anything else. We also have a team that goes out and checks fields, looks for um, plant diseases, bugs, weeds, uh, we can help you identify any um, pests if you have any. And then we can work with um, one of the contractors there to find a control, either herbicide or insecticide. So um, we offer that assistance to you. from us 
and seed products that, that we can help them manage that. And, uh, and, and so many of the products that we're talking about today, uh, uh, the alfalfa products uh, we, we supply Nappy with, we do some corn products with Nappy, the hay grazers we do with Nappy. Uh, we, we help them with the wheat program there, uh, which is pretty exciting because now they're going to be able to start up that flour mill real soon. And so we're helping them with seed products specifically. But once they make those purchases from us, we're on the farm a lot. And, and I get the very familiar with Ms. Yazi and, 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 and Mr. Yassini, and, and I get to see Mrs. Pablo uh, quite often. And so, uh, so we would do the same thing here, uh, is uh, we would spend our time and resources with you guys, ensuring you that, one, we get a better understanding of what you guys' are production management strategies are, and what capabilities you have, and then helping you work within those to, again, achieve high yields and, and, and good quality for your, for your market demands.